Hello and welcome to FRAP Talks, where we discuss anything related to modular synthesis with FRAP Tools instruments. We often think about music as organized sounds, but today we will talk about some devices that do the exact opposite, the random voltage generators. Coming up. First of all, let's think about music in general. Probably every one of us has listened to a song performed live at least a couple of times. Did we have the same experience every time? Very likely we didn't. Even if the musician rehearsed perfectly, there is always something that makes one performance different than another. It can be an instrument slightly out of tune, or more relaxed performers, a different sounding hall, or even our position in the audience. And none of these things can be foreseen. The point of this introduction is that we often enjoy those unpredictable events that make one performance different than another. All of this, of course, without mentioning improvised music, where we precisely expect to hear something different every time. To sum up, we enjoy surprise and unpredictability nearly as much as we enjoy the comfort of listening to our favorite song over and over again. In electronic music, we can program a machine so that our composition will sound the same at every performance. According to our artistic vision, this thing can be either good or bad, and for some people, being able to add a touch of unpredictability to their composition is necessary. It can be a gentle timber variation or a complete melodic mayhem, but it has to be there. This need for unpredictability inspired, even from the early days of electronic music, the design of a specific circuit whose purpose was to have unexpected behaviors. Eventually, such a need led to the development of one of the most famous and iconic random voltage generators, the Bucle 266, a source of uncertainty, and we'll refer to it quite some time throughout this video. It packed several random voltage generators, and they all relied on a well-known circuit called the sample and hold. The main difference between the 266 and other random voltage generator was the amount of control it allowed over its parameters. The musician had the opportunity to define, to a certain degree, the flavor of the random voltages. Since the sample and hold was the foundation of such random voltage generators, we will start our journey from there, and to better understand it, we will talk also about a similar circuit called the track and hold. Then we will also put our hands on our tamed random source, the Sapel module. A track and hold is a circuit that needs two things to operate, a stream of gates and a source signal, either audio or CV. When the gate is high, the track and hold lets the source signal pass through, and that is the tracking phase. When the gate is low, the circuit holds the last played value until the next gate high signal. The sample and hold is a similar circuit, but without the tracking part. Instead, whenever it receives a timing pulse, it holds the momentary voltage of the source signal and holds it until the next pulse. Remember our video about timing pulses? We have said that a gate can stay high as much as we want, while a trig signal is only a few milliseconds long. So if we feed a track and hold circuit with the trigs instead of gates, we would obtain a sample and hold. The sample and hold circuits are very common to generate random voltages. We just need to use a random signal as a source. The most common one is the white noise, which is a sound signal that has an equal distribution of energy per band unit. It means that its spectrum is entirely flat and it doesn't have a perceivable frequency. On an oscilloscope, white noise looks like a wild oscillation, and its fluctuations are fast and unpredictable, which is the opposite of a periodic signal such as a waveform. So if we feed a white noise into a sample and hold circuit, every trig will sample an unpredictable value, different every time. We call these random values a step, because the transition between them is an actual step, with no other values in between. So let's demonstrate its behavior with Sapel. Sapel is a double random generator. Everything that happens in the yellow section also happens in the green one. Here we can see the yellow sample and hold circuit, and here the green one. Now, technically, every circuit in the Sapel is a sample and hold, which makes a total of 8 of them, but there are some significant differences, and we'll talk about them later on in this video or in other episodes. We said that we need two things for a sample and hold, a stream of impulses and a source signal. In the Sapel, the stream of impulses comes from the clock. There are two of them, one per section. Such a clock can be internal or external, but for this video we will stick with the internal one. The source signal is the thermal noise generated by the machine itself. Each of the eight sample and old circuits has its noise source. You cannot be more random than that. It is worth noting that all the values are unipolar in the tradition of the sample and hold circuits. Remember, we talked about unipolar signals in our videos about amplifiers and inverters. 
First of all, we can use the sample and hold output to control our oscillator's pitch. It will immediately start to play random frequencies in sync with Sapel's clock. We can take advantage of the clock output to trigger an envelope and control our oscillator's amplitude. Now, instead of a continuous stream of random frequencies, we will obtain individual random musical events. We can then route the sample and hold to many destinations, such as Brenzo's timber parameters. In this case, we can also use the clock to ping its wavefolder circuit and use its internal natural decay instead of a dedicated envelope. Stepped random voltages also pair well with Fumana. By patching the sample and hold output to the parametric scanner position CV input, we will emphasize a different portion of our sound spectral content at every new random value. In the previous patches, we used the sample and hold to directly control some of our sound's features. However, we can use it in a more subtle and indirect way that will still impact our patches. For example, we patch Sapel's white noise straight to our CGM mixer. We then use the Sapel's clock to trigger an envelope and control its amplitude. If we now patch our sample and hold to Falistri's full CV input, we will change the envelope decay at every clock impulse, creating a very dynamic pattern that resembles an open and closed hi-hat. So far we have seen the random values that we can get out of a sample and hold circuit. We have said that these voltages are stepped because the sample and hold circuit keeps a steady voltage until a new trig picks a new one. These voltages still retain a somewhat rhythmic nature that mimics the timing pulse pattern that we use to trig the sample and hold circuit. A downside of stepped random voltages is that the transition between any of them is really abrupt. So if we want to add a touch of unpredictability to a more dilated patch, such as drones or pads or ambient sounds, we may need the smoother control voltages. The Bukla 266 provided two fluctuating random voltages. As the name suggests, this circuit outputted random voltage oscillation whose speed can be controlled by the musician. In the Spell module, we implemented one fluctuating random voltage generator in each of the two sections. So to put it simply, we can say that this is a sample and hold circuit with a filter that smoothens the corners and makes the voltage transition fluid and seamless. Now let's get back to the previous patches, but this time, instead of the stepped random voltages, we will use the fluctuating ones. <laughs> First of all, let's hear how it sounds applied to the pitch. It may not be that exciting, but if we use it to control the flip sync's oscillator's frequency, it will be way nicer. In this case, a slow random fluctuation is an excellent companion for droning sound. A fluctuating random voltage is an excellent way to animate our spectral content for atmospheric sounds. We can duplicate it with the 333 and patch it to different Fumana's parameters. Remember when we say that these voltages are all unipolar? Well, this is an excellent opportunity to take advantage of what we learned in the previous video about inverters. We can use Fumana's attenuverters to apply the fluctuating CV in opposite direction to different parameters. The higher a voltage will be here, the lower it will be here. Fast fluctuations also play well when controlling the falling or raising stage of an envelope. 
this case, it will randomly change the duration of our decay, creating some random subtle changes. We have said that sampling a random noise provides an unpredictable series of random voltages. This is not entirely true. Statistically, more of these random voltages will have a medium intensity, and this is often called a Gaussian distribution. Control such a distribution was a priority even back in the 70s. Hence, the Bucla 266 featured a peculiar sample in all the circuit named the stored random voltages that allowed the musician to define the random voltage distribution to taste. By rotating a knob, one could determine the average magnitude of these random voltages. And Sapel has something similar, so let's see how it works. To demonstrate the probability distribution, we patch the sample and hold to Branso's fault productive input and the fluctuating random output to Fumana's parametric scanner position. By moving the switch to the right, we activate the probability distribution for the sample and hold and for the fluctuating random voltages, respectively. Then we can use this knob here to change the voltage probability. If we leave it in the central position, nothing changes. If we move it to the right, most of our random voltages will be higher. If we move it to the left, they will be lower. We can turn the distribution off any time to compare the new results to the classic Gaussian distribution. So in this video we talked about some unpredictabilities that can make our music more enjoyable. However, we just scratched the surface of what Sapel can do, not to mention other modules that can be almost equally unpredictable. For these reasons there will be other videos about randomness, so if you want to know more, feel free to follow us on our social media and stay in touch for the next episodes.